Thank you very much, Gavin, uh, for that reminder of uh, how sustainable uh, Aboriginal people uh, were and their, their lifestyle in this beautiful area of ours. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Val Shear. I'm the former mayor of Cairns Regional Council uh, and a passionate advocate of the environment and sustainability. And I was delighted to be invited uh, to come here today to be the MC for the day. So uh, we've got quite a, a long day ahead of us. We'll finish at seven o'clock tonight after the, after the public meeting. But it's my duty at the moment to introduce the Vice-Chancellor. Sandra, I thought they might have given me a little spiel with everything about you, so I don't have one. But what I will say is that I've known Sandra for five years. And um, for those of you who don't know her, she is a, an exceptional and dynamic person who has uh, extraordinary influence, extraordinary connections, and has really uh, been passionate about the contribution that a university can make to the broader community and, uh, and I think uh, to the nation and, uh, and internationally as well. Uh, so uh, I think it's, a, it's just been partly because of Sandra's drive that uh, JCU is amongst the top 500 universities in the world. And congratulations on being the new chair of Universities Australia. Everyone, uh, uh, Vice-Chancellor Sandra Harding. Thank you, Val, for those very kind words. I do appreciate it. And just for the record, the new job, uh, the Chair Universities Australia job, doesn't start until May. The Australian got that wrong, and I'm quite grateful because there's a few things to do between now and then. And just in case you're wondering, um, I don't leave JCU. That's simply the peak body of Australian universities, and a Vice-Chancellor is lucky enough uh, to be elected Chair for a two-year period, and I happen to be that person for the incoming term. So look, um, thank you very much. And thank you, Gavin. Uh, and I would also acknowledge the traditional owners. Um, certainly since I've been at JCU, I've been so pleased that we've had a terrific relationship with the Irukandji people, particularly through Jeanette. Uh, of course, you know, great that you could be here and I know you've helped us out as well. And uh, it was a very fine moment and it was part of our 40th anniversary as a university that we named the Creeks on the um, Townsville campus with names selected by the traditional owners there. And we named uh, Atika Creek um, as part of that celebration here to, to give visible evidence of our acknowledgement of the traditional owners. So I thank you for that. And like Val, I thank you for reminding us that sustainability is, the heart, is at the heart of one of the oldest living cultures in the world of which you're a, you're a part. So thank you, Gavin. Look, can I also welcome you all here today. This is a very important day for us, an inaugural event. Um, and inaugural events, being inaugural, um, is an important moment for us. Um, sustainability is very important for the university, and I'll, I'll say a little bit about that. But uh, I think the fair and the opportunity today to engage in a whole range of ways, whether it's through products or whether it's through speeches and, and discussions. Um, today I think will be a very exciting day, not only for the university, but I hope for the broader community as well. We're going to, if it's an inaugural, it's good for you to know, it's our ambition and our intention that we will do this every year. Um, and what we'll have is a different theme every year uh, for our, sim our symposium. This year, as you know, the theme is how can we live and eat sustainably in the tropics? And the tropics, of course, is a very important. It's, it's very important for James Cook University. It's very important for those of us who live in the tropics and who care about it locally here in northern Queensland, but northern Australia more broadly. But the tropical world more generally is, is of such great significance in the world to come. Uh, I know there's a lot of talk about the Asian century, and I think it's quite right that we focus on that particular axis of global economic growth. But I say to the Prime Minister, and I have done, and I say to Simon Crean, the Minister for Regional Development, and many others too, that you know where we sit here is incredibly important. We sit at the intersection between the two great axes of global growth, the Asian axis, but also the tropical axis. We should be responding to both of those. It's important that we should. And with that, gro that growth, of course, in all ways, comes great challenges for us to ensure sustainability in a whole range of ways. Um, and the, the topic uh, this year is focusing on food and, and food security, but the reality is we need to engage with sustainability across the board. So it is very important. I mentioned there'll be some speakers, and I, I'm sure you know that on your program. We're very fortunate to have Julian Cribb, uh, author of The Coming Famine, um, uh, Rob Hopkins of the Transition Network and our own uh, professors Bill Lawrence and Jeff Sayer uh, who are genuine experts in their, in their fields. 
it is an opportunity, I think, the symposium for the broader community to, to come to the campus, for staff and students to interact, to develop some networks, develop some focal points of interest perhaps between us that we might be able to take uh, further as well. So I'm really glad that you're here. Uh, I mentioned that it's reasonable for James Cook University to be involved in this because of that tropical focus, but it's also um, an interesting university in another way too. And I've only been lucky enough to be here since the beginning of 2007. And there are people here who've been here a long time before and have done an enormous amount of work. And Val, you mentioned the, the ranking of the university is actually these days in the top 400 in the world based on research excellence. That's really nothing to do with me at all. You know, that really is building on the enormous work of so many people over more than 50 years that the university has been in existence. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just a great achievement. But... Our university, part of what I love about it is not just its tropical focus, which I think is very important and very distinctive, but it's also because of the type of people who are here and the sorts of things that we do. Um, every university, and probably most institutions around the world these days, will say sustainability is important. Governments will say sustainability is important, and it is important. It's right that people should say that. But when I came to JCU, and certainly since I've been here, what I understand is that it's not just the rhetoric. People, it's actually personal at our university. A lot of our academics, a lot of our professional and technical staff see that sustainability is really very important to what we do to the extent to which it now forms a formal part of our statement of strategic intent, where we focus on sustainability as the main focus of the university, not just in terms of what happens externally, but also the way in which we manage ourselves um, too. So it's, it's, it's actually very important for us and, and quite, uh, quite personal. We do programs, of course, teaching programs as well. Um, so there's the research angle, but the teaching programs too. And I had the great privilege of speaking to our latest cohort of students in our Masters of Development practice recently, um, just um, an hour or so ago, I guess it would have been. I, I was with them. And those students come from all over the world, predominantly um, Asia, but all over the world, and they focus on issues of sustainability. And then we've got other academics who do this too. So with their own PhD students and with their own students as well. So it's an internal focus, it's an academic focus, but I think it's actually very much a community and institutional priority for us to be engaged in this thing. Um, and so we do. We have a particular program that uh, was mentioned, I think, briefly by Val, Tropico, which is an award-winning program, I've got to say, and it expresses our internal commitment to sustainability, which, um, which is, again, as I say, incredibly important, uh, important to us. Now, the role of uh, my role today is, is really just to provide a few opening remarks, but in addition to doing that, and perhaps, I hope, persuading you that sustainability for us is more than rhetoric, that it actually does go to the heart of who we are and what we do, I have had, uh, and I have, a couple of very pleasant duties. One was, had you been in the room a little while ago, I signed a declaration, and it's a, a Talwar declaration. And this is something that has been around for quite a long time. Um, a number of universities have signed up to it. And just to give you a bit of a sense of what this might mean, um, it is a 10 point, it contains a 10 point action plan for higher education institutions like ours to make a public commitment to sustainability in its teaching and its practice. Um, now, um, it's been around for a long time, it's about 440 university presidents and chancellors, my equivalent, have signed their institutions up, it's more than 40 countries, to this declaration. We hadn't done so, and we thought that today was a fantastic occasion to make this public commitment. And that's what I did before. I signed that declaration, and, uh, and it will be available to you if you have a look. Basically, what it does is it, it commits us to do 10 things, and I'll just tell you what they are. Increase awareness of environmentally sustainable development. Create an institutional culture of sustainability educate for environmentally responsible citizenships. And if we're serious about making a change and leading in this world, we have to make sure that the next generation of leaders um, are out there doing that. Foster environmental literacy for all. To practice institutional ecology, that is to set an example of environmental responsibility. Things like recycling, waste reduction, environmentally sound operations. 
involve stakeholders in this, to advocate for it, collaborate for interdisciplinary approaches, and this is something that often is hard for universities and researchers to do, but it's important that we should because we know the world's problems, sustainability and problems associated with that uh, included are not going to be solved within the confines of a particular academic discipline. It's going to require a number of folk to be working together on it. Enhance capacity of primary schools and secondary schools to focus on sustainability issues, do our part there. Broaden service and outreach nationally and internationally. We do a lot of that and we'll do more and to maintain the movement as well. So today, um, I'm pleased to let you know that we have signed that. We have committed our institution to be part of that movement. Um, it will be a challenging thing for us to keep the faith on that. Um, I don't do these things lightly. There's every, any number of you know, agreements and declarations we could sign. Uh, what we'll do each year is we will cover off on what we've done against each of those ten points. You know, I don't think it's the sort of thing that if we're serious about, you just stick in a drawer then. I'd like to imagine um, that our committee that's chaired by our Pro Vice-Chancellor Jeff Loughran uh, will make sure that we do this every year and report to ourselves about what it is we're actually doing in this domain. I think that would be good for us all and a bit of good discipline. So that's one thing I've done. There are two more. I'm, I'm going to mention to you today um, by way of launch, one a bit in anticipation and the other actually doing so, uh, two new projects that particularly um, highlight our role or our commitment to sustainability and environmental education. The first is um, the launch, if you like, and it's a soft launch because we've got still a lot of work to do um, in this space, but I wanted to let you know that this is coming. We're going to launch the North Queensland Sustainable Schools Network. Um, or what we're calling TROP Futures North Queensland. And what we're looking for this to be is a network for the leading sustainable schools in our region. And that region is a very broad region. By and large, we run from Mackay North, um, is the way in which we conceptualise the Northern Queensland region. That network is aimed to link schools that run hands-on sustainability science projects allowing teachers and students to easily share their ideas, experiences and knowledge. And we're going to facilitate action between those members. We want to have a positive influence in the education that students have. Uh, we want to support teachers who are keen to ensure that this is a vital part of their curriculum. Uh, we're looking initially at around 10 to 15 schools, those that sort of have a track record and that have a keen interest in this first off, and hopefully we'll grow that as a movement. Um, a movement. Um, and what we're, we'll be doing is we'll be contacting some of those target schools in the near future to um, see whether they'd like to uh, work with us on this initiative. I think it's a really important initiative. We know that none of these things happen. Change doesn't happen by declaration. You know, I signed one before and I think that's important. It doesn't happen because we say so. It doesn't happen because people, when they get to sort of middle age like me, sort of have a revelation and think that we need to do something different. We've got to be talking to young people. We've got to make sure that a sustainable uh, sustainability is embedded in education. We need to make sure that environmental acknowledgement is in education education because that's how a difference ultimately is going to be made. So, um, and that's a very nice segue to the next little launch, um, which is not a little launch at all, it's actually a very heavy one. I'm going to hold something up for you. This, as you can see, is the International Handbook on, of Research on Environmental Education. And a lead, the lead editor on this is none other than our own Professor Bob Stevenson, who is right here in front. Um, it's a weighty tome, and I think before I say any more, we should congratulate Bob on its production. I'll tell you about it. Let's congratulate Bob. <laughs> Let me tell you about it, um, and I think it's just perfect that we get to do this, at least in Australia today. The American Education, Educational Research Association, which is the world's largest and most prestigious educational research association with a membership of 25,000 scholars, um, is the, has just published this particular uh, book through Routledge. Um, it's important that it's here because we've got Bob here, of course, as well. Um, Bob works out of the Cairns Institute and through the School of Education as well. It's the first in a series of research handbooks that that association has produced, and it will give and does give enormous international visibility and credibility to environmentally sustainable education, a focus on sustainability education, environmental education, within that field of education. But there's more. Um, if you actually have a look at this book, it does... It is interdisciplinary in its concept. 
It is interdisciplinary in its execution, in its methodological um, background and focus as well. It's just a fabulous piece of work and it's a substantial piece of work with 51 chapters written by 91 authors from 15 countries and Bob himself is the first author of four of those chapters. The purpose of the handbook is not only to illuminate the most important understandings that have been developed by environmental education research, but also to critically examine the ways in which the field has historically progressed and changed over the decades, the current debates, the controversies, what is still missing from the environmental education research agenda and where that agenda might be headed in the future. This is a critically important piece of work. Um, it's been a, a long time in its gestation, but quite right too when you see the depth and the, um, the expertise that's been brought to bear in it. So I commend that to you. And um, I want to thank Bob for giving me the opportunity today to say a few words about it and to launch it and to warmly congratulate you again on what is a really magnificent piece of work. So again, Bob, congratulations. Finally, um, I'd like to acknowledge um, the chair of the committee that advises me on sustainable matters, um, Professor Jeff Loughran here. I'd want to acknowledge Colin, um, Adam and Lena and all of those who've been involved in putting together today, uh, today together rather. As you are well aware, these sorts of things just don't happen. Um, they happen because people are passionate about it and they put the hard work into making sure that it's actually executed. I want to thank Val uh, very much for coming along today and, and playing uh, what is an extended role, um, as you mentioned, up until this evening as the MC for what is our very first sim sim sustainability symposium. And most of all, um, though, I want to thank you all, e each and every one of you, for coming along today. Uh, I welcome you to the campus if you're not terribly familiar with it. Um, I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope the debates are heated. I hope they're enlivening. I hope you learn some things, because if we don't learn some things every day, I think it's a day wasted. But uh, what a topic to be learning about today. So congratulations again, uh, and thank you very much for listening so attentively. Thank you.